Okay, we are now joined by our 2024 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion, Ty Majeski. Ty, I see you have a beer in your hand. Hopefully you didn't learn too much from your teammate. It's a lot quieter in, the, uh, in here than in the barn, for sure. We'll open up to questions uh, for Ty, and we'll start in the back to Davey, and then go around the room. Davey Siegel with Sirius XM, straight ahead, Ty. Um, the shoey seemed like you were a little apprehensive at first. How was it going down? Well, I didn't want to get in my sock wet. Uh, I'm paying for it now, so my right, my right sock soaked. Uh, no, it's a little bit of a, uh, um, I guess, a tradition uh, with Thor Sports. So, uh, what are they now? Six of eleven uh, championships here. So that's uh, phenomenal. It really is. Um, you know, Duke and Rhonda Thorson, Allie Thorson, everybody at Thor Sport has built uh, such a mega team up in Sandusky, Ohio. We're incredibly proud of that to bring home another champion. Uh, to uh, to Sandusky, being uh, outside of Charlotte means a lot to us. Um, you know, we we put ourselves on an island. I feel like that can be an advantage and a disadvantage at times. But um, overall, you know, we control our own destiny. We build all our own chassis, hang all our own bodies in house, and um, like I said, we we do control our own destiny, and that's uh, a big reason why when we when we find something, we can uh, we can keep it you know to us, right? In the in Charlotte, sometimes when you find an advantage, it can uh, get spread around very quickly. But we can keep it um, to us up in up in Sandusky. So, just super proud to be a part of the Thor Sport Racing uh, organization, and um, happy to bring home another championship for them. Corey challenged you for a little bit tonight, but once you were able to get by him, you you pulled away pretty much every time. Did you ever not feel in control or command of the race tonight? No, not really. Um, really, I, I felt like you know we were had a really good shot of winning this thing last night after practice. Um, you know, over the course of my career, I've um, built up a notebook on what trucks need to feel like to win, and last night felt like a winner to me. And uh, yeah, it, it certainly was. We were super dominant tonight. Uh, fell off a little bit on the long run on the first run of the race in stage one. Uh, Corey was able to get by me, but uh, we made one small change and, uh, yeah, propelled us to victory. Uh, Joe does a great job. Uh, he is one bad dude when he is on his game, and uh, uh, there's nobody I'd, I'd rather go to battle with, with uh, other than him uh, to win a championship. So super proud of him and, and uh, you know, how, we've, how he's prepared our guys to rise to the occasion when it, when it counted, and our pit, our pit stops were phenomenal tonight. I feel like um, obviously, our truck was great. I feel like I did a good job on the restarts, uh, keeping control of the race, and that was a difference. Go over here to Matt. Matt Weaver, Sports Knot. I want to go back to uh, 2021. So the, the Roush thing did not go well. You and Phil at Nice had a really tough season. Um, I know you had some options you were trying to put together. Um, I think after the Derby is when that first conversation happened with Thor Sport. Was there ever a part of you that thought, okay, this is going to be really harder than I thought it was going to be? And what ultimately is what swayed you to, I want to go do the Thor Sport thing instead of some of the other things you had on the table? Yeah, uh, first of all, I want to go back to, you know, 2018 when Rao shut down their Xfinity program. Chad Bryan, a great friend of mine who I keep in contact with today, I probably talk to him at least once a week. Um, he gave me a great opportunity in 2019. We went out and won three of five or six ARCA races that year and it propelled me into my opportunity with Nice. And uh, obviously that didn't go as planned. To, uh, December of 2020, won the Snowball Derby. And uh, a couple weeks later, um, you know, was in contact with, with the Thor Sport organization on putting something together. I had a few other opportunities that maybe, you know, would have uh, yielded more races. Uh, for 2021, but I decided to move up to Ohio. Um, you know, my wife and I made it made made the decision to uh, to go up and and really take a shot on a future, right? Something that uh, that looked like that could be something that had longevity to it. And um, I went up in 2021 with, with Thor Sport and and only did three or four races, and uh, was on there you know, on their roster as, as a full-time engineer. 
did some engineering for uh, you know Paul Menard ran some ran some truck races and I was uh, an engineer for him and, and was scanning parts at the shop, um, really learning about the race trucks and how they're built. I every single part, every single truck went through me at one point or another, and I was able to learn really how these trucks work and how they operate. And um, when I got my opportunity full time in 2022 with with the 66 bunch at the time uh, with Joe Shear. Uh, we just hit the ground running and, um, you know, obviously I, I wanted to be full time in 2021, but looking back now and the experience that I gained by, you know, touching every single part that went into the race truck, um, I feel like helped my progression and, uh, you know, happen earlier. And, you know, when I got that opportunity in 2022 to go full time, we hit the ground running. We were competitive right off the bat. Uh, obviously made it to the championship four, uh, didn't win the championship, but um, yeah, just, uh, you know, looking back at it, there's, you can go back in your life and you say, wow, you know, there's different decisions that, you know, change your life and, and took a different direction. And, and that's one of them that we made. And um, it was the be one, of the be one of the better decisions I've ever made to, uh, to go with Thor Sport and uh, Duke Ronda Thor, and they've built such a great culture up there and uh, just proud to carry the flag for them. I didn't realize it till just now talking to Joe, but you and Joe didn't really know each other, which surprised me given the Wisconsin roots and Johnny. I'm curious how much of the, you know, Midwestern roots, what Joe and Johnny did together, was that part of your thinking too, that, hey, I want to go work with Joe, or did that kind of materialize later? Well, you know, Joe Joe and Johnny were chasing me for a little bit in Wisconsin. So, uh, you know, Joe, Joe right away, he's like, hey, all right. I, I, I remember it vividly. I was at my little scanning station uh, early in 2021. Hey, so uh, what are you running for a setup in your late models? And uh, I knew at the time it was probably going to go right to Johnny. So, um, you know, told a couple white lies. And uh, <laughs> it's just crazy, you know, looking back at all, all the races that Johnny and I have raced against each other. Obviously, Joe Shear was a, a, a part of, you know, Johnny's late model program. And um, it's you know, just the timing was right um, to kind of carry that torch for Wisconsin and and uh, and couple up with Joe Shear. It was just a, a natural fit for myself and him. We had so many things to bond on uh, beyond truck racing, and um, and that's one thing that I I really hit on is is driver crew chief relationship. You know, our relationship is is more than just like I said, driver crew chief. Uh, we're friends. Uh, my wife knows I talk to Joe just about every day um, for a long time on how to make these trucks better and, and how to better ourselves uh, going to these races week in and week out. And I feel like that's one advantage we have on the rest of the field. Thank you. Up here to read. Reed Spencer with the NASCAR Wire. Congratulations. Um, you said on Media Day that the truck that you were bringing here and the setup were a departure from what you'd done in the past. Could you elaborate on a little bit on how they were different? And uh, did you feel like you were taking a risk when you were doing that? Yeah, I'm not going to elaborate on how they were different. Uh, <laughs> keep that to myself. Uh, yeah, we, you know, we were good the last couple years here, but um, felt like we were lacking a little bit of longevity. And we saw that a little bit in the first stage uh, where, you know, we had a dominating lead. It was a lot like last year where we, we, we built up a lead and the 11 caught us. And uh, we were able to hold on for the stage win in last year, um, but Corey was able to get by me this year and we made a really good change at the end of stage, at the end of stage one to uh, make our truck just that, that much better. So uh, a lot of work went into to Sim. Uh, you know, I was at the Ford Sim uh, at least once for, for Phoenix and we were able to, you know, tune in the tire and make really good changes. And um, looking back at it now, um, you know, the, the tire was, was, was really good and we were able to make changes on it. Um, and, uh, yeah, propel us to a championship. So anytime you can use your tools and trust your simulation, uh, that Ford performance has, uh, has, has given us is, is a good thing. Um, when you can trust your tools and, um, have a correlate to real life. Go to, uh, Bob next. Bob Parker's Fox Sports. Can you take me kind of through the emotions of 
a week ago, getting in and kind of knowing that, man, if things it very well could have worked out that you didn't advance, and now seven, six, seven days later, you're a champion. Well, I think the biggest thing, Bob, is, you know, you're, you're, we really weren't in control of our own destiny at Martinsville, and I had a lot more nerves going into that race uh, than this weekend. Uh, just be, like I said, because, you know, you can only control so much of the race, and when the 17 put on tires and, um, and was coming through the field, I was helpless, right? You're, you're not in control of, of, uh, of your own destiny, and, and tonight, and, or this weekend for that matter, you know, I knew our truck was really, really good uh, last night, and we knew that, you know, we controlled the outcome. And uh, there's just, uh, I guess, a little calmness in that. And I was very relaxed this weekend. Uh, knew we had a, a great package coming here and a great truck last night. And um, I was incredibly confident uh, throughout yesterday and throughout today. I knew we, we were going to be tough to beat. Go to uh, Stephen up here in the front. Steven Stump, Frontage.com. Uh, Ty, when the laps were ticking down and it was clear that uh, the 19 and the 9, their kind of fresher tires had worn out and they were all losing ground, kind of what was going through your head as you were, you know, inching closer to the checkered flag, especially when we saw what happened at the end of last year's finale? Yeah, it was probably the, la the, the longest 20 laps of my life. Um, you know, Brian Lines was counting each lap down one by one. It's like, man, just skip a couple to make it seem like it's going a little bit quicker. Um, you know, obviously you're waiting for that caution. And, you know, that's obviously the last thing I wanted to see. We had a great truck um, on the short run and, and the long run tonight after the first stage. So obviously the last thing I wanted to see was a yellow. Um, but, uh, you know, throughout the race, I, I felt like no matter what happened, we had a truck capable of, of, of fending off any, any type of challenger. Um, you know, in preparation for this race, I put a lot of emphasis on restarts. Uh, because I, I felt like that's where the last two championships um, were decided was was on restart. So put a lot of emphasis on that. Watched a lot of in-car cam from the championship four last year and, and, and two years ago on what you know I could have done different in 2022 and, and, and how Ben won the championship last year. Just trying to perfect those restarts. That's where races are one loss in the truck series. Track position is so important. Uh, I think Corey got me maybe on one restart. I don't know how many restarts we had as, when I was the leader, but, uh, yeah, he got me on one of them, and I was able to get him back and clean track. But, uh, yeah, track position's king. We were able to, to you know, hold on to a, a strong lead at the end of the race. And uh, with last week's finish and how close you did come to potentially, you know, not making it to Phoenix, was there kind of that extra fire kind of just to say that, uh, you know, it's bad news for everyone else to the fact that you made it here? Yeah, yes and no. Um, you know, I thought the 19 made an interesting decision, you know, back at Martinsville. I feel like we've been a strong contender all year, and he was in a position to, you know, choose who he raced in, in, in Phoenix this weekend. And um, here we are as champions. So uh, it's crazy how, you know, one little – decision by somebody else can kind of control your destiny but um you know i've been on the on the bad end of that stuff so i'm happy to uh to take one go to zach zach sterniolo nascar.com ty um this kind of goes into what you've touched on already but um so much success this year um on tracks like this irp richmond what do you feel like you were able to learn or glean from those races in particular um Obviously, each track has its own unique personality, right? But um, is, does anything from those two, either of those two tracks translate to what you guys were able to do tonight? Yeah, we studied real hard on, you know, load profiles of the racetracks. I'm going to get a little bit technical with you. But, um, yeah, one and two is a lot like what we see at Milwaukee or IRP. And then three and four is a lot like Richmond. So max load uh, going in or, or in one and two is on entry and exit. And then in three and four, we, we're seeing max load in the center. So it's kind of a combination of, you know, IR, a little of IRP, a little bit of Richmond, a little bit of Milwaukee to come here because, you know, the track is has, you know, you know two different corners here. And you have to combine those and, and try and make your, your truck versatile in both corners. And um, that's something that we really focused on in the simulator. And um, I was able to 
you know, start off with our baseline last year, you know, tune the tire in the Ford Sim to, to my baseline and, um, and, and knowing what the truck felt like, you know, the last two days, you know, it, it was exactly how it felt in Sim. So that's a testament to the, to the Ford Sim and, and all the work that they're putting in on their end to give us the tools that we need to go and compete for championships. Jonathan in the back. Uh, Jonathan Field, the racing experts right over here. You know, uh, you're obviously you're a champion of the Kawiki Driver Development Program. Uh, a lot of great racing in Wisconsin. Legends like Alan Kawiki, you know, Matt Kinseth, whatnot. You're now a NASCAR champion, just like those guys. What does that mean to you? I'm glad you you, you brought that up. Um, you know, watching. You know, I shouldn't say watching. Uh, you know, looking back at you know, Allen's championship season, and he was able to do a Polish victory lap here at Phoenix uh, to make really it come full circle. And, you know, I was the in, inaugural 2015 Quickie Driver Development Program champion. And to come here as a NASCAR champion, do that Polish victory lap, uh, so special uh, for that program. And, and Allen's legacy was happy to, to carry that, uh, that legacy on tonight. Uh, he was definitely in my thoughts as I was doing that victory lap. Uh, their their program was, you know, really a jump start to my career. It, it forced me to step outside of my comfort zone and, and run different races. Um, you know, my late mile crew chief is right back there, Toby Noodleman. Uh, we went and, and put on a, gr a great season together in 2015. It propelled me to that championship. And, um, yeah, you know, really took the next step of my career. We were able to, to use that money to build a new race car, and that race car went on to win us a ton of races. And... Um, yeah, it's just funny how, you know, one little situation can force you to, you know, win a championship and, and make a little bit of money and put that money back into the racing program and build a really good race car that um, puts you in position to win races that, you know, that's why I'm sitting here today. So uh, just happy to carry that Wisconsin flag. A lot of great race car drivers have come out of Wisconsin and um, just super honored to, to be able to carry that flag this evening. Go to John. John Newby Savage Ventures. So we learned tonight that your nickname is Golden Shoe. So clearly the team's embraced you. You know, they're super supportive of everything you've done. I was just curious, from your perspective, what makes that relationship so special? You know, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, Duke is Duke and Rhonda are, are very, very good people, and um, they they like people that. Um, you know, put the race team in position to win races, and it was just a natural fit, right? They're very uh, good people, and we, you know, we just hit it off right off the bat. Uh, my engineering mindset, you know, Duke saw that in me and was able to, uh, you know, give me an opportunity to, to go and work at his shop full-time in 2021 and 2022 and um, put me in the truck full-time as well in 2022 while working full-time at the shop, and, you um, like I said before, that's really what propelled me, you know, here today is being able to learn the race truck inside and out. Um, I, I really understand and can comprehend any any part of the race truck. And I think that's a huge advantage that I have on my competitors. So um, it's just uh, very cool to, to look back at, at those opportunities and how they came to fruition and, and do a, you know, a championship. Over here to Luis. Luis Torres, Motorsports Tribune. You alluded it with, with your tenure with, with Raj. As far as the Ford program, how special is to keep the momentum going for Ford as far as the National Tour Division winning championships and also for you knowing that you had a lot of trials that you really issues to get to this point? That's four in a row, right? So uh, got one, one this year, so two more to go. Uh, that would be phenomenal to make it, uh, yeah, six in a row for Ford. Yeah, they gave me my first shot, right? I always ran Ford motors, engines in, in my late models, and uh, we're always a part of their uh, their program at, at a, obviously a very low level. And, um, you know, Ford and Roush gave me my first opportunity to sort of burst my way in, into the NASCAR scene. And uh, kind of I, I call it the NASCAR funnel. Once you get in that funnel, 
you know, you can kind of create different opportunities for yourself uh, once you're in that funnel. So, um, yeah, huge thank you to Ford. Uh, they gave me, you know, a simulation job in, in 2019 after Rouse shut down their Xfinity program and, you know, gave me, an, you know, a little bit of money. Every sim session I did, I didn't do many of them, but it was enough to kind of keep my head above water. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, that was in, in correlation with the Chad Bryant ARCA racing program, was able to win a few races and, um, and I was able to, to kind of keep my head above water in the NASCAR scene and, uh, give me my next opportunity with Nice Motorsports. So, um, yeah, you know, Ford is a great manufacturer and, and super proud to, to be carrying their colors as, uh, as 2024 champion. Here we take two more for Ty. We'll go here and then end the back. Um, Ty, I know you emphasize about the importance of late race restarts. Did you have any strategies in place uh, for, especially that late race, for, especially for that last race restart in the race? Because as a race car driver myself, I know the emphasis of having good late race restarts. You're just trying to set them up and, and try and be unpredictable. And that's the biggest thing is once you start becoming predictable, um, they can, they can take advantage of that. So just trying to change it up a little bit in the restart box. You only have, you know, so much that you can play with inside of that box. And, um, like I said, yeah, just trying to be unpredictable and, and change up where you fire, uh, to keep those guys on their toes. Once you start firing in the same spot over and over again, I mean, this is elementary stuff, not giving out any secrets here. Uh, you, you know, you, uh, you make yourself vulnerable on restart. So like I said, just switching things up. Uh, I felt like I got a, a really good couple last restarts there at, towards the end of the race that uh, I was able to really clear myself by turn one and not have to worry about, you know, guys dive bombing me. We'll wrap over here in the back. Noah Reed for KZ, KSAZ Fox 10. This win is huge for just the late model community. There's already been a huge outpour for you on social media, and it just goes to show that the short track community, the grit, the resilience that you already had to go through just to get to this point. But I want to ask you, what would you say to all of the people who have supported you on the grassroots level? What would you say to them now that you're here as a NASCAR truck series champion? Yeah, just, uh, just keep digging, right? The biggest thing that I've learned and my dad has taught me from a young age is surround yourself with good people and good things will happen. Um, like I mentioned before, Toby Noodleman, my crew chief, he's right back here. Uh, sharing this championship together, you know, even though he wasn't part of the, you know, this specific championship, he's a huge reason why I'm here uh, talking to you right now as, as 2024 Na NASCAR Truck Series champion. And um, you surround yourself with good people and stay grounded and, and never think you're the best. That's exactly when you're going to get beat. So just keeping grounded, always keeping your head down, always trying to get better each and every race, whether you win or not, there's always something that you could have probably done better in that race. And, um, you know, I was always a, a huge, I, I was very big on watching, going back and watching film and understanding how the race played out, what I could have done different in different situations to be better. And I think that's, you know, I haven't been the best guy on restarts in this series. You know, I'm not one of those aggressive guys. I feel like that, you know, some other guys are, are probably better on restarts than me, but, um, you don't want to put yourself in a situation to take yourself out of the race early. And uh, I felt like I put myself in good positions tonight and executed very well in restarts. Pit crew did a great job. The truck was great. Executed on all levels and uh, very proud of our, our performance this evening. Well, Ty, thank you for all your time. Congratulations on an outstanding race, outstanding season, and you're a champion. Enjoy the off season. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.